Saturday morning. This is the second video that I'm recording in a row. So we train probably less than 24 hours. So yesterday was the video where I was deadlifting, uh, had a really good outfit on. And today, outfit's still pretty top notch because we have the Levi's on. The, the Levi's with a slight stretch. The difference between yesterday and today is that my body feels like a snow plow ran it over last night. Uh, I'm feeling it. Feeling it, guys. I'm a little groggy. But you know what? Jordan woke me up. She smacked me around a little bit. She was like, what the frick are you going to do? Are you going to lay here in bed and complain about how your body feels like you were hit by a snow truck? Or are you going to get down in the garage and do the unthinkable? I said, oh, babe, babe, what is the unthinkable? She said, axle bar, zercher squats. I was like, are you joking with me? She said, no, that is what a true Sigma male would do in the garage. So strapped on my big boy jeans and uh, walked into the garage that was 15 degrees. Grabbed myself some Psycho Pharma Edge from the one and only Rick Del Hagen. I'm gonna put it in there. We're gonna see what happens. I got another surprise. I'm not gonna show you it right now. And we're just gonna work up to some Zerchers. Could it be an absolute pathetic performance? Probably so. But if it is not, then I'm a happy man and everybody wins. So, let's do it. Cherry bomb flavor. I happen to be a big cherry flavor guy. Mmm. Ooh. Ooh. It's good. It's good. It's a bit tart. It'll wake you up. It's pretty much what I need in there. I think there's like 400 megs of caffeine in here. I already had one full cup of coffee. What'd you hit? Uh, 185 for five. 185 for five front squat? That's impressive, man. Freaking 8 a.m. in the morning. We are just waking up the hard way today, aren't we? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you got some front squats. I got freaking Zercher squats. Woo! Just gotta get up there, you gotta do it. Sometimes good things happen, you know? Sometimes you're like, oh man, I'm, I'm not feeling it today. I'm not feeling it right now. These warm ups suck. And then all of a sudden, something great starts clicking. You guys ever had those sessions before? You know, sometimes it's the opposite, where yeah, it just sucks and it's a bad session. I'm not gonna lie, they they happen too. But sometimes you can't base it off the warm up, and as you start going, you feel the rhythm of a dancing. And uh, man, man, is it good stuff. So I'm gonna keep working up. We're gonna hit some fives and go from there. All right, second surprise after that psycho pharma. Ooh, look at this freaking shirt. Thick as frick. From the one and only Rick Del Hagen. Ricky Sticky or Sticky Ricky. I got one of these bad boys. I'm not gonna lie, it's a 3X. It's a 3X. It's pretty tight. So I don't know if that's the shirt or me just growing, uh, but I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm cool with it. Very nice material, actually. Very, like, stretchy. Like, see that, like, snapback? 
boom, snaps right back. Uh, but I had to do some zerchers today for my boy, Eric, who hopefully I'll be seeing soon for some content, just chilling, training, all that good stuff. Uh, but we're doing zerchers in the honor of the Del Hagen today and just having some fun. Uh, so I like supporting my friends. If you guys like Eric, great guy, uh, phenomenal just personality, and uh, I like supporting him. So got one of these, got a little pack of this in Cycle Pharma, and I'm gonna donate my body to science with some zerchers today. So let's go. We got about 300 some pounds on the bar. Let's make it happen. Trying to trying to hold it and it's straight up rolling like forward. Do you see it in the video? Last set. Uh, every rep I was doing, the straight up bar was rolling forward into my grip. Now, I don't know if that's just because it's the axle bar. I haven't really had this problem before. I'm also in an, uh, a grade in this garage where basically I'm sloped. Uh, I guess if I'm facing you, I'm leaning forward because the grade of the garage, I don't know if that's affecting it or if I needed elbow sleeves. This problem is a little bit perplexing and profound to me right now um, because it's making these way harder than they should be. So I'm just trying to tackle that. Jordan said my butt was drooping, which is just an interesting adjective for my butt, drooping. Uh, I prefer- a Butt wink, I don't know. I prefer just great squat depth <laughs> and mobility, but we'll categorize that with a synonym of drooping. Uh, so I don't know, we're gonna just try to figure this problem out because I wanna push some weight on these and have a little bit of fun. But if that thing keeps rolling forward, I'm in trouble. I'm, in my logic, I'm thinking more upright torso so it doesn't roll forward. But even as I'm doing that, it's somehow like inching its way up my arm. I don't know if it's just because, like I said, it's a fixed axle. I don't know. This is like dumb stuff to talk about. But let's just see what happens. Pin press, so she looks over and she sees me just in agony and she's like, why would you do that lift? And I said, Jordan, I don't know. I don't know. But something deep down inside told me that I need to do it. And in all honesty, uh, zerchers are great because you're doing a front squat movement pattern, right? Like she was just doing. However, with that zercher position, right? The crevices of the elbow, it's going to make it more like a front carry at the same time. So you're not only working the posterior chain, but you're also working the anterior part of the body. So your abs, right, your, your quads, your just uh, shoulders from rounding forward. We have to keep and maintain that upright position, uh, which is really great, especially if you compete in strongman, because there's gonna be stuff like Conan's wheel, sandbag carries, Atlas stones, a lot of things where you're in a lap position where maybe you have to pick something up, get that triple extension and load it, or something where you just have to pick it up in a front rack and carry it like a Conan's wheel, or even similar to like a sandbag. They're a little bit different, but doing things like this will definitely get you stronger in those movement patterns. And today, what I'm doing is no belt. So no belt today, uh, and that's gonna help regulate my fatigue. So if I put my belt on, I know I can push heavier. I know I get a little bit more mentally amped up because I got all my gear on. Uh, but since it's the end of the week, I'm gonna regulate this session by not wearing a belt. It's gonna hold me back a little bit. I only have you know, my bare complex knee sleeves over my jeggings and they're not giving me a ton of support, uh, just a little bit of warmth. So I'm not gonna be able to cause as much systemic fatigue as I could if I did gear everything up. Now I will say zerchers are pretty taxing, right? Because 
We have to worry about if the weight's gonna drop forward. We gotta make sure that we're having a good proper bar path, making sure that we're upright uh, and balanced, okay? That takes a little bit of kinesthetic awareness or just kind of knowing where your body is in space when you do this lift, because if you don't, right, it's, it's gonna be a lot easier to fail the rep. So throwing these in, just having some fun with them today. Like I said, support my man, Rick Dale Hagen, because he loves Zerchers and weird lifts, so I just figured to have some fun. Typically, it was supposed to be a front squat variation for me today, but called a quick audible, and we're doing these. I think I have like one more set in me, and then I'm gonna move over to pin presses like Jordan's doing. All right, so Zerchers are done. Absolutely awful, but they're fun. I like doing things that are fun and challenging. Zerchers fit that category perfectly. I worked up to 345, which is nothing impressive. I haven't done these in months probably since I want to say August with my buddy over at Elite FTS. So one of those lifts that the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Uh, but quick substitution instead of front squats. Now moving on to pin press, which is set up behind me. I love doing pin presses. They've always been a staple in my programming to building overhead strength. So you can do the pin press. Usually I'll do like a chin level, maybe for one block, then a nose level, then a forehead or maybe slightly above a forehead. And that's just gonna work different parts of the press, especially if you wanna strengthen your lockout or your triceps, these are great. They're not super fatiguing because it's a shortened range of motion, similar to doing like a board or block press for your bench press. So really enjoy doing these. I did warm up set 135, then I went to 185, just did 205, I'll go to 225, and I'm doing reps of five, no belt today. Do have the elbow sleeves, just keep my elbows warm and just trying to keep a really good balance in my feet. I have a slightly wider stance. I have my toes out a little bit rather than straight forward and always wanna keep your butt squeezed as you're pressing. The one thing I like about the pin press is it helps remind you to keep that chin tucked back so your bar is set exactly where you want that press to be. If you were doing a shirt press or even a push press, getting that head out of the way so you can have a vertical up and down bar path with the overhead. So let's do it. Okay, so pin press is all finished up. I did 205, 215, 225, 235 for my sets. Then I did a back off, uh, 205. So good, good reps there. Shoulders are definitely fatigued, but still felt pretty strong for being one of the last sessions of the week. And then tomorrow is just more like lighter stuff that I'll do. Nothing crazy, a little bit of conditioning and use the rest of the day to recover. So. I'm actually gonna go do some slingshot bench now. Really like slingshot. Uh, I'm gonna do three sets, anywhere from eight to 10 reps. Once again, kinda just working with my pec injury that I had in October. Things are feeling pretty good though, but the slingshot's a really nice variation that I can use towards the end of the week. Uh, the slingshot kinda helps give you that little pop from the bottom. You can technically go heavier than normal because you're using the slingshot to help assist your bench press, but for me, it's nice to be able to have a little bit extra boost when dealing with a pec injury or even a shoulder injury. A lot of people like using the slingshot. So I'll do that. Not sure where I'll be. I'm thinking anywhere between like 275 to 300 pounds for my sets. I am a little bit more fatigued, so it's probably gonna be on the lower end of that spectrum. Uh, but slingshot's really cool. And actually I have a story about it, which I'll tell you in a second.
so doing my sets, I started off obviously 135, went to 185, 225, 255, and then I got to 275, which my first set felt really good, but I know that I don't wanna to jump too far ahead of myself, once again, dealing with a little pec injury from the past. So I'm gonna stay at 275, do the remaining sets there, eight to 10 reps, and then next week I'll probably jump up a little bit, but I haven't used this thing in a long time. I wanna say like, it's probably been over a year or two since I've used the slingshot. And I forgot how awesome these things were. So if you're somebody who wants to get in a little bit more benching volume, you can definitely use a slingshot. Uh, it's gonna help kind of boost you through the bottom. And I call them almost like future reps. So you're able to handle a heavier amount of weight than normal. Uh, and obviously as the slingshot, or as your reps get higher, the slingshot does less work. So it's really gonna help you out of the bottom and then finish out those strong triceps. But funny story about this uh, is, this is the first slingshot I ever had bought. And I actually bought it at the Arnold, I wanna say eight or nine years ago at this point. And it's funny to just look back and see how far you've come. And that's kind of why I'm telling the story is because you guys can probably relate if you're on your training journey from where you're at today and where you started. And it's easy to get caught up in things now with not making the progress that you want or feeling like things are just going slower than they should be. But I want you guys to just take a second and think about the first day you hit the gym or the first workout you ever had, right? What was that like? And then think about where you're at today, right now. And sometimes we get so lost in the current moment that it's nice to reflect on the journey of where you got today, okay? And maybe that was years, maybe it was a couple months ago, maybe it was a couple days ago, but even in that time, you've still have made progress. So just think about that and don't lose sight of that. But this was given to me, or well not given to me, I bought it, but I actually got to meet Mark Bell. So I purchased this and then I got to meet Mark Bell. And like I said, back then, I was a nobody in the industry. I went there and I got really lucky because I was able to meet so many people uh, that I've been watching for years, whether that was in bodybuilding, strongman, CrossFit, or just fitness personalities, influencers, even weightlifting, right? Olympic weightlifting at the time, that was kind of my thing. So I got to watch a lot of Olympic weightlifters. I got to talk to Donnie Shankel. I was standing next to Donnie Shankel and he was just having me watch lifters and he was just cool enough to answer some of my questions. Uh, but just kind of crazy to still have this and it's like a little bit of memorabilia uh, because I'll be at the Arnold, like I've been talking about in all my videos, with Juji, Grib Genie, and I have so many more people that I know now <laughs> and it's crazy that people even want to come up and say hi to me, right? Back then, nobody knew who I was. I was that guy going up to people and I still am that guy that likes to introduce myself to people that you know I respect or want to meet, um, but just wild, wild reflection. You know, I was, I was there and I remember got to take a picture with Mark Bell, got the slingshot, got to meet a ton of people. And then a couple years down the road, you know, Mark Bell is messaging me on social media and sending me a bunch of their products. So guys, don't ever give up on your dreams or your goals or the ambitions that you have, okay? All it takes is somebody who's just not gonna give up, okay? You have to be almost slightly obsessed and annoying in the pursuit of these goals, but it's just like anything else, right? With your job, whether it's your training, whether it's jujitsu or whatever hobby that you like, all it is is just not giving up and just showing up. And some days are gonna be great. Some days are gonna be awesome. You're gonna be crushing it and killing it and making a lot of progress. Other days are not gonna be that way. It's gonna be a fight. It's gonna be defeating. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna question, you know, or you're gonna question yourself. You know, should I be doing this? Do I wanna do this? It'd be real easy, right, to give it in right now. It'd be real easy to throw in the towel. But that little voice in your head, right, that's telling you not to give up, listen to that one. Because if you don't give up, I guarantee you, you're gonna get somewhere. And wherever you get to, you can look back and you can look at all the things that you've learned along that journey and how much growth you've had over that progress and use it towards any future endeavors that you have. So just a crazy little story. So I still have this, I'm uh, just insane of where things have gotten and you know where they're gonna go. Right? As long as you don't give up, you're gonna keep going places. So if you guys are at the Arnold, make sure you stop by, say hi to myself at the Grip Genie booth or if I'm just walking around or hanging out, you know, don't be a stranger. I love connecting, I love answering questions, I love taking pictures. 
all that kind of stuff. I chose this life and to be able to hang out with you guys who watch this content and resonate with any of the messages that are put out there freaking means the world to me. So I'll be there. Uh, I'm getting there Wednesday and I will be there until Monday. It's going to be insane. All right, I'm prepping myself with just a lot of energy that's going to be used during those couple days, but I wouldn't have it anyway for such an amazing experience. So that's my little spiel. I'm actually going to do uh, some accessory work, nothing crazy, fluff and puff stuff like I talk about. I'm just going to sprinkle it in, keep it really quick, do a super set back and forth, not much rest in between, and some tricep push downs. And then I'm going to do some lateral dumbbell raises. I'll try to do 12 to 15 reps for about three sets and see how that goes. All right guys, so that is all she wrote for the program. Just finished up my tricep pushdowns and my lateral raises. The pushdowns actually felt super strong. I was able to push up weight, which I haven't been able to really hit in the past. I think that's due to me spreading out the volume more uh, throughout the week. I used to do a lot of pressing in one day, more of my hypertrophy phases. And I think that really fatigued the triceps. But at the same time, I think going through that hypertrophy phase, now transitioning into strength training, has given me more strength in the triceps along with just kind of my massing phase and nutrition. So pretty pumped about that. Uh, the shoulders on the lateral raises went okay. Uh, having a little bit of shoulder pain. Uh, I don't know if I talked about it, maybe I did on here, I'm not sure. Uh, but rotator cuff, you know, just is fatigued from a lot of the jujitsu. We did a lot of Kimura work, a lot of uh, grip taxing and weird shoulder kind of positions to start in. So didn't push too heavy. I just did 35 pounds for 12 to 15 reps. Uh, just kept it there. Maybe down the road, I'll be able to push a little bit more, but I like to regulate, you know, when I need to, so I don't get myself in a bad position. But yeah, that's it. Overall, just super fun training session. We started off this thing with some freaking Zerchers. Shout out the Boogs, how to represent him. Uh, then we moved in to some pin presses. We got some slingshot bench, couple accessories, and that's gonna be it for today. Tomorrow's session, gonna be a lot more dialed back, maybe like one or two main movements, uh, but I'm not gonna go crazy balls to the walls with them. Focus a little bit more on some accessory, a little bit of conditioning, and hopefully you guys will get a video of that uh, whenever that video is out. But I got a lot to do. I gotta get this video out on YouTube. I gotta head to a wedding tonight. I gotta freaking trim my neck hair because it's outrageous and I don't wanna look like a schlop, uh, but it's gonna be good. And once again, guys, I'm just putting out these videos and for those of you that enjoy the content and like being here, those are the people that I want here and you guys are awesome. If you liked it, obviously hit the like, subscribe. There's other ways to support the channel and it means so much to me. Uh, and lastly, I'll be at the Arnold. So if you guys are at the Arnold, come up and say hi. Uh, but that is all that we have today. I'm pretty excited, I'm pretty pumped up and I've just been in a good place and feeling good about this stuff. So until then guys, stay a lean, mean strength health machine. I'll catch up with you next time. Peace.